Hello, my name is Gene Montristelli, and I am the editor of TappingQ&A.com, and the video that you are about to watch is an interview that I did as part of the 24 Hours of Tapping. The 24 Hours of Tapping was a free event, which was a fundraiser for the Peaceful Heart Network. The Peaceful Heart Network provides training and trauma relief tools to those in war-torn countries, as well as working with refugees all over the world. They've been able to help out over 200,000 people all over the world. After you watch this video, if you find this video something that was useful, the very easy way that you can say thank you to the guests for giving their time and sharing their expertise is to go to 24HoursOfTapping.com slash support and make a small contribution to support the Peaceful Heart Network. Again, that is 24HoursOfTapping.com slash support, and I hope you enjoy this conversation. Jules is an EFT trainer, a mentor, an advanced certified EFT practitioner, and a social worker based on the East Coast of Australia, which means that she's already enjoying a beautiful morning. She works online with people from all over the world in her private practice, specializing in helping people recover from the trauma of sexual abuse. She particularly enjoys training mental health professionals on how to incorporate EFT safely and gently into their practices as they work with their traumatized clients. Please welcome to the virtual stage, Jules. Hello. Hi, how are you? I am good. How are you doing this morning on the other side of the world? I'm good. It's a beautiful day here in Coffs Harbour. Excellent. I've been up early Excellent. listening to you guys. Yeah, I've seen you popping in and providing some comments, and I appreciate you've been hanging out with us. Um, so the, the, the question that I've been asking lots of folks, and I'm sure you've heard me do that, but I just want to hear it from you, is I would love to hear how you found a passion for wanting to do this sort of very important but very heavy work. Like, how did you find yourself into a position where this is something that really interests you that you wanted to make a difference in this way? Sure. So um, I was working as a counsellor. So I'm a social worker by background. So I've been a social mm -hmm. worker for 30, 32 years or something like that. And I was working in the sexual assault service of our local hospital. And I'd been there about three years. And I was really, I, like part of me loved the work, but I was getting burnt out. I was pretty... Um, I didn't feel that I'd been trained in anything that was helping me to effectively help my clients, basically. Okay. So yeah. I felt like what was happening was, you know, I was trained in talk therapy, basically. And what I found was most of my clients didn't want to talk about what happened to them. So yeah. I was Imagine a bit like, that. okay, so yeah. talk therapy is a bit useless when nobody wants to talk. Um, and actually people couldn't talk. Like they physiologically... You know, they were so anxious about coming to appointments. Some right. some people, it would take me five goes to get them to actually attend an appointment because they were so anxious about coming. Um, and I just felt, even though I'd done all the specialist training, like I was, um, I had avoided working in sexual assault my whole career. And then I sort of got to the point where I had done a lot, most other things. And I thought, oh, look, if they're going to train me in it, that'll be fine. But the training really didn't prepare me for the level of trauma that I was working with. And, and I think I was suffering vicarious trauma myself, actually, looking back. And so I credit Nick Ortner for my discovery of EFT because I found it just work, Just looking on Facebook, um, the tapping solution kept popping up on my feed and I just yep. kept dismissing it. And then one day after it popped up for about the 17th time, I thought maybe the universe wants me to see this. And so I pressed, I clicked on it, and what it was was Nick Ortner um, doing an interview with Louise Hay, who I'm a huge fan of and have been my whole life. And Louise Hay had been um, experienced sexual trauma as a child, and so I, my ears pricked up with interest that she was so interested in this tapping and Nick Ortner did some tapping with Louise around her sexual trauma and I saw this amazing shift happen very quickly and I was kind of like if it had been just Nick talking about it, I probably wouldn't have given it much credibility but because I'm so fond of Louise Hay and I no. know that she wouldn't be promoting anything that wasn't good. So I went off and just looked into it myself and I kind of just taught myself initially 
and I started doing it with my kids. I had three teenagers at the time and um, then I started doing it with friends and family members and pretty much anyone that would sit down long enough. And then when I felt confident, I started having a go at it with some clients, like carefully chosen clients who I knew were pretty open-minded. And then I just was blown away at how effective it was so quickly, even when I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. And so then, of course, I went off and did training and then things really improved for me when I heard also on the Tapping Solution, the World Tapping Summit or something, Dr. Peter Stapleton talking. Um, she lives just a few hours down the road and my ears pricked up because here's another Australian woman um, who's obviously an expert in EFT research. And so I sent her a little Facebook message and just said, Peter, when's your next training? I'd love to come. And then that's when my EFT kind of skills really um, took off. I started doing her trainings and being an assistant at her trainings and then I became one of her trainers. And, yeah, the rest is history. The rest is history and here we are. So then as we, you know, as we step into an issue that is as complicated and as fraught as sexual trauma, yeah. when you have the opportunity to do some work with something like this, what is the initial approach into doing this sort of work? Yeah, so for me, I like to do lots of, you know, what we call psychoeducation, like basically explaining to people a lot about um, how working somatically is different. So working with the body is very different. Usually most people I see, well, a lot of people I see haven't done any sort of EFT before. Some of them have. I see a lot of EFT practitioners actually, but um so I do a lot of explaining about how trauma shows up in the body, how EFT works, the fact that we need to go very kind of slowly and gently mm -hmm. and that my primary goal is keeping the person feeling comfortable. So, um, so you know, I do a lot of explaining about EFT, like I talk about the layers of the onion and that yep. the layers can fall off pretty quickly. And I sort of prepare people for, you know, you could be one minute feeling very, very angry um, and then a couple of minutes later be sobbing and feeling very, very sad. And that can be quite normal with EFT and, you know, your throat could, I mean, with sexual trauma, what often happens is people's throat starts getting very tight and they'll say, oh, I feel like I can't talk. Um, they can feel sick in the tummy. So, you know, I sort of, I really try to prepare people for all the different kinds of things that can happen because not that I want people to be scared, but I want them to be prepared and for them to know that's a normal thing. And, you know, your job is just to let me know that that's what's happening for you and we might need to slow it down and, you know, do some chasing the pain, do some gentle techniques, back off a bit on the specifics. So I, I do, I spend, you know, at least I have a long sort of initial consultation and then a, the first session is usually no actual tapping on anything. Um, you know, maybe I might show them how to do a little yeah. bit of basic EFT or tap and rant on something relevant to them, but I'm usually not wanting to open up any big stuff in a first session. Yeah. And, 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 and I appreciate that and that, you know, over the course of, you know, going on 11 hours now, the number of people who have brought that up really, really specifically of going yeah. gentle, slow, gentle, slow, gentle, slow mm. at the beginning, which is, I think a good rule of thumb to begin with. Um, but in, in this particular case, I could see that being something that's even significantly more important to do as a way of yeah. keeping people safe as they're navigating all of that. Yeah, because, you know, for most people who've experienced sexual trauma, the, there's, there is a lot of, you know, the big emotions that are really common are things like shame, embarrassment, um, guilt, you know, often they're blaming themselves, there mm -hmm. can be a lot of anger, sadness, you know, worthlessness, but even just the, the anxiety about even thinking about talking about it, like that's often kind of the yeah. first layer that has to be addressed. Um so when I sort of explain to people that, you know, we want um, my aim is for you to become as comfortable as possible. So it's I don't want the session to look like this, you know, with lots, yeah. of, big, lots of intensity that we're just going to start on something um, that's quite, re quite recent. Um, and we and that and I basically I sort of explain to people I'm having a conversation with your nervous system here. I, we really need to. 
um, befriend your nervous system. We want your nervous system to feel like this is going to be an okay thing to do, that I know what I'm doing, that I'm not going to, you know, let your body or your nervous system go anywhere that it doesn't want to go. Um, Yeah, and that, that... the goal at all times is to keep the person feeling safe and comfortable because if, if a person's feeling very dysregulated, like if your throat yeah. is closing over, people yeah. feel like that's my body saying, don't talk about this, don't talk yeah. about this. And, and I can certainly see with an issue like this just because, like, you know, as, as culturally we are getting better, but culturally we are not good at yeah. talking about and taking care of people who have experienced sexual trauma that, right. you know, in, in so many circumstances still today, when a person raises their hand to acknowledge this is the thing that's happened to them, they are the mm-hmm. one who is stigmatized about doing, about it being in this particular situation and yeah. blaming a victim and that sort of stuff. And so I can, yeah. I can see how it's necessary to just creep up on it so gently because it doesn't feel safe even with a trusted person who has a kind face who is well formed who is well trained who only wants what's best for them still i'm sure there's a part of their internal guidance system that's trying to keep them safe saying don't say it don't say it don't say it don't say it and being able to just initially be gentle with that thing and start with where they are yeah. And the thing is that, you know, a lot of people that I see have been help seeking for decades. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they can have had 20 or 30 years of talk therapy on and off that hasn't worked or kinesiology or, you know, they've, often they've tried all different kinds of modalities. They've tried medications. They've tried, um, you know, you name it, they've tried it. So they're, they're pretty frustrated often. They're pretty, you know, they've... Um, it's not, it's not like I'm the first person that they've talked to about this. And right. so, and, and the thing is that if they have done talk therapy in the past, either their experience is that it, it had, wasn't very effective, like it didn't really help me, it brought a whole lot of stuff up that right. I just had to go home and deal with, but I don't, I don't feel like I'm really any better from that. Or, you know, that helped me to understand that, yes, I was a child when that happened and so I shouldn't blame myself and I shouldn't feel guilty, and I shouldn't um, be angry at myself. So I've had all this education that intellectually I know yeah. I shouldn't feel like this about this, but because we know trauma lives in the body, right? So intellectually doesn't matter that much. We need yeah. to help the body. That and it's, So EFT is really good um, at helping us kind of access, help the person access their own body, which often doesn't feel like a safe place to be. You know, yeah. so there's all that as well. There's all the intellectually I know I should be over this, but it, in my, my body is nowhere near that. You know, my body is um, doesn't even want to be here. And that's yeah, I mean, yeah, especially when the trauma that's the place the trauma happened was inside of the body. And now you're asking someone to go inside of the body to try and do that transformation. I can see how 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 scary that could be on an emotional level and not wanting to engage in that particular way. And if and if just thinking about it makes you feel sick in the stomach, yeah, that doesn't feel safe, does it? You know, like yeah. And 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 if just thinking about telling this lady even a little bit, I mean, my kind of I'm always very future focused, really. So I'm not, you know, tell me all the bad things that have happened to you. Yeah, it's kind of like, okay, how's this showing up for you now? And what what is it that you would like to be different? So what's a kind of a mm-hmm. thought or a feeling that you're having often? that you would like to be having less of, right? Because I'm going to help you to work on, you know, a one identified trigger to start with. So something that keeps coming up for you that's driving you crazy that you haven't been able to, you know, do anything about. Um, so the work is, and, you know, I'm letting the nervous system know this, we're not going back into memory yeah. for the sake of it, right? What do you want to get out of this? What? How do you want things to be different? What would that look like? Um yeah, and sort of, so we're working in this direction. We're not going, you know, it's not, not to say that we're not going to do past events, yeah. but, you know, for a lot of people who've experienced sexual trauma, the thought of actually going back and focusing specifically on actual events can be just like it's and, no deal. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and as you say that, like I fortunately have never had that sort of experience, and I can remember yeah. very early on as I was re- learning tapping 15, 18 years ago, like one yeah. of the things was like do the personal peace procedure where you write down all yeah. the traumatic events and you go and you clear through it. And 
I would, I can still see this yellow notebook in my head. It was a yellow spiral bound notebook. And I would just look at the notebook and I would get sick to my stomach and like, like not even opening it, just knowing, Oh my gosh, all that horrible stuff is in there. And it really, it really formed me into being what I call as, as a practicalist in my approach. And it's about like that forward thinking that you're talking about. What is the, what is the the next better state that I can step into from where I am yeah. right now? And what's the that's work right. that I can do to do that? And sometimes that's asset and resource building. And sometimes yeah. it is looking back and unpacking something in the past and clearing it. But I'm yeah. only going back when it presents itself for me to take the next step versus looking back for the sake of looking back and finding all of those negative things that are bouncing around in there and being able to unpack it in that particular way. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and that just, that just sort of, you know, there's a bit of relief that, okay. So because memories will obviously come up and it's not to say that, you know, obviously we're going to follow the daisy chain when it feels safe when it feels appropriate, um, if the person wants to. I mean, I have, you know, clients that I have no idea what happened to them and I, and because they've never wanted to actually talk about it. But, boy, has it set up a lot of uh, traps of oil stress in their body. But we've, we've never done any work on the actual event. You know, it's often right. all the things that happen afterwards. Like I told mum and she didn't believe me. Right. Or she minimised it and said, oh, that's boys being boys. Or, you know, well, you should have, you shouldn't have been right. drinking or you shouldn't have gone home with that person or, you know, basically it's your fault. Right. Um, so, you know, it's often what we're tapping on is more about that, you know, the sort of the trauma after the trauma. Um, yeah. A bad, scary thing happened to me and then I didn't have any support, you know, I wasn't believed, I wasn't protected or, um, you know, and then the sort of the, the limiting beliefs that get formed in the midst of those traumas, you know, oh, I don't matter, I'm worthless, I'm not good enough, yeah. speaking up isn't safe, my body's not a safe place, you know, yeah. all those, all of those things. Yeah. And, and, and as you say that, I think about, you know, in in, in parts of the, the, the Middle East where unfortunately they experience explosions on the street in a, in a pretty regular yeah. thing. One of the things that they have learned is after that happens for the people who are injured is to flood their hospital room with the people that they know, their friends, yeah. their family, the guy who runs a coffee shop down the street. So we're yeah, right. creating this thing that it's not isolating, even though this bad yes. thing happened, you're not isolated. Yeah. And what you're talking about right here are all of these all of these responses from the people around us who either are uncomfortable or think they're doing the right thing or don't know how to yeah. respond what they're doing is they're creating isolation inside of that thing by saying yeah. you shoulda 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 and yeah. instead of saying oh my gosh i want to care for you it's just like yeah oh, you're in that spot in that particular yeah. thing and so that becomes this huge compounding factor when the extreme unexpected thing shows up the yeah. isolating piece of it is then becomes that multiplier that really knits yeah. it into our experience absolutely yeah so when it comes to responding to sexual trauma is there is there anything different in the approach uh, we've we've glanced off a number of the things yeah. here about dispositionally an approach that I, I think are really good for us in this particular setting and are applicable mm. lots of other places, forward thinking, that sort of stuff. Are there yeah. any specific things that someone should pay attention to when thinking about this particular issue? Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, this, I mean, this is, these are sort of generalizations, but I have worked with, you know, thousands of people over the years with yeah. this experience so it's you know I can I'm allowed to make some generalizations I think I mean things like the the balancing statement you know so I don't meet many people that want to say even I I deeply and completely accept myself let alone yeah. I love and accept myself you know yeah. sometimes so it's really important to find um, a balancing statement that works for each person because if you, if, you know, you say, and I love and accept myself, they would just look at, you know, people would just look at you like, what on earth is this woman on? Like, I do not yeah. love myself. I do not accept myself. And quite often the one I offer is just, you know, that's just where I'm at at the moment, right? Yeah. So even though I'm terrified, just thinking about my daughter going to this school camp because I'm scared that it's going to happen to her, and I feel sick in my stomach just thinking about it or whatever the words are, that's just where I'm at at the moment. 
So that that thing about self acceptance is huge. Um, yeah, and, and 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 for me, like I, I wandered away from that particular setup phrase very early on because yeah. I was ta I, I was I was tapping on someone who had a knee issue. And I said, right. even though I have this knee issue, I love and accept myself. And then we spent the next 30 minutes unpacking the sense of self-acceptance and never, ever got to the okay. knee. And like, no. like I am, I am all for tapping on love and acceptance when love and acceptance is the thing I need to be tapping on. Yeah. But I, I think, it, I think it's really, really key that you're noticing yeah. here where the person is standing and, and yeah. what they're doing. The conversation we had a number of hours ago with Craig Wiener about this trauma informed approach. That's what you're talking yeah. about here is recognizing where they're standing in that just because it is a useful phrase for us to be using it's not mm. useful for where that particular person is standing at the moment and being super aware of that's useful for us yeah and the other thing that i think is really important is um you know i'm really clear with my clients that you will only hear me say words that you have said right so mm. i'm not adding my own flavor there's almost, you know, there's no intuition going on in my sessions, as in obviously I'm very intuitive actually, but right. I'm not trying to guess how I think the person might be thinking or feeling. It's basically we do a lot of, um, you know, okay, so this this is the emotion, anger, what is it out of 10, what's it about now? Okay, so it's because thinking about when I told mum what happened to me, she said, you little liar. And I feel yeah. this anger in my chest, right? So I'm very kind of like, it's like a little collaborative exercise. These yep. are the words, are they? Right? And then yep. I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said because what you find working in this space, um, if you say a word that is not quite right, it's like yeah. a little, it's, well, it's like a big landmine's gone off in the nervous system. Yeah. Um, it breaks rapport, you know, so so I could say, and mum's just a bitch, you know. But yeah. if that person didn't say that, they they will be like, "Whoa, yeah. you! I didn't say that." You know what I mean? So, the and the other thing to be aware of is, um, you know, so people will give you a lot of words, and so you know, as a trainer, I sort of tell my mentees like, "So yes, use your clients' words, but not all of them, right?" So you've right. got to be able to kind of pick. If, if you're putting in too many specifics when they're at a 10 out of 10, then that's, right. that could be um, lead to more dysregulation, lead to them flooding, lead to them abreacting. So the person might, you know, because of the kind of trauma pool, they're, they're giving you lots of information about all the reasons why they feel really angry about that now. Um, but that doesn't mean you're going to put all of that in a setup statement. Because yeah. you, you can see they're very activated, they're very worked up, and it's like, oh, okay, let's just be very deliberately global here. And even yeah. though I'm just, I'm so angry, just thinking about this now, I'm so angry. That's just where I'm at at the moment. So we're, you know, we're starting out often quite global because there's a lot of intensity, and then we're creeping in, we're creeping in, and then, oh, boom, next thing we're into just. I'm so sad, you know, I'm yeah. sad that that happened to me. That, And then people will, often what happens is people go, like all the sadness, it ruined my life. You know, if that yeah. didn't happen to me, maybe I wouldn't have ended up on heroin. Maybe I wouldn't have been smoking marijuana for the last 30 years. Maybe I wouldn't have married that terrible person. Like they start, they start yeah. going, oh, all the terrible things. And then we've got to kind of just bring them back to, okay, yep, that's what the brain does. And so I've done a lot of pre-framing with people that that's the way this works. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, yep, we're going to listen to that, but I'm not listening to that for 10 minutes. Let's come back to this. Um, yeah, so it's that balance of kind of psychoeducation around this is the way I work. It's about keeping you safe. It's about keeping you as regulated as possible because, um we don't achieve much with a dysregulated human. Like I tell my mentees, you know, you can zoom in and get it, get starting getting specific when you've got a regulated human in front of you. But if, yeah. and we actually not trained even as mental health professionals, in my opinion, uh, to even necessarily know what dysregulation looks like because yeah. we're so used to seeing it. People come and they just tell you all the worst things that ever happened to them, like you say, with the, the personal <laughs> peace procedure. Yeah. And, and our clients are so sort of, you know, before EFT, um, just so routinely dysregulated at a very high level 
that I was used to seeing that, you know. So it's, yep. it's been doing EFT that's really helped me notice the little micro changes in the, you know, the what's happening in the eyes and the voice and the posture and the face and the, all of the rest. So oh, someone just said, wow, this is hard to watch and stay present. I meant to say a little trigger warning. Yeah. <laughs> I, that when I'm talking about stuff, it, it can really bring stuff yeah, up to people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And one of the one of the things I really appreciate about what you were just sharing right there is this idea of the 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 pre framing that you're doing that yeah. typically even if someone is coming to us distressed mm -hmm. they are more well resourced before we start diving in and going into the details yeah. and that sort of stuff and so they're going to have the opportunity to hear that so that once you once the brain is acting the way that you pre-framed it you're able to go this is what we were talking about 30 minutes ago this is what we talked about a couple of weeks ago so what you're doing yeah. is by pre-framing it in a state where they're able to hear it and absorb it when we're mm. in the emotion of being dysregulated, it puts us yeah. in a circumstance where we get the opportunity to go, okay, I'm just reminding you of the, I'm not trying to convey new information to you, which is going to be mm. an impossibility, like you said, in that unregulated yeah. state. But yeah. hopefully I'll be able to point to that information I gave to you in a regulated state. And yeah. it's, it's interesting as time pass passes as a practitioner, like yeah. the length and the number of things that I pre-frame just yes. keeps, like the library keeps getting bigger and bigger and every single one of them exists because of stepping into a pothole going, Oh yeah, That's I right. could have taken, right. I could have taken care of this with a little information up front yeah. that would have made this moment significantly more manageable for me in that particular way. That's right. And actually, um, if I can just introduce a little thing that I do to a little analogy yes, that I use to help um, explain to clients and I also help explain it to people I'm training about. Um, it, it's kind of just lightens it up a little bit, right, because it, it is a heavy topic. Um, so I call it the banana bread analogy. And it, I just developed this when I was working at the sexual assault service because I used to talk about the tabletop and the legs, you know, being the core issue and the legs being the, um, you know, the times when that happened, et cetera. And people would just kind of look at me like, oh, my God, I've, I've got so many tables yeah. and I've got tables on tables and is, am I going to have to Table on tables together? and there's you know? 800 legs under each of them. Like I can remember, I can remember one of Gary's yeah. old drawings where there were literally was like 800 legs under this one table. It's like, oh, my God, I don't want to deal with that. That's right. So like what I do, I do with this analogy. So I've got, I bought a nice little um, banana bread in, which I made today, which we've had, we've eaten some of it already, unfortunately. But so I say to people, let's say this is, this is the overall problem that you're bringing me. So let's say this is um, feeling very overwhelmed, right? So that, because I say, you know, what's one feeling that you're having a lot that you'd like to experience less? You've been triggered to feel overwhelmed many times in the day and the week. Um, so let's just cut off a slice of that loaf of overwhelm and then I'm going to ask you to cut that slice into like four little pieces mm -hmm. and then what I'm going to say is I'm going to ask you to tell me about a recent time when you felt overwhelmed, right? And so this is all done in the first session and, and so they'll say, oh, well, you know, yesterday my daughter came home with the form about going to school camp and I just thought I can't let her go because mm -hmm. something bad will happen to her. I don't want to let her go. Um, I'm not going to sleep if she goes. She's not going to be safe. Boom, 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 becoming very overwhelmed, very overwhelmed. And so that will be the first thing that we're tapping on as something that just happened yesterday because it's mm -hmm. nice and kind of safe. Yep. Or it might be that we tap on. So we probably would do that first, you know, even though I'm feeling overwhelmed. Oh, just thinking about, you know, she's come home with this, permission form to go to school camp and I just I'm terrified to let her go because I'm afraid something's going to happen to her and this would be a regulated person would get all these words out if they were dysregulated they, uh, yeah um and that's just where I'm at at the moment you know and I'm feeling it in my stomach or whatever overwhelmed 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 so we might tap on that little piece of banana bread until it's nice and low yep and then it might be, and this mightn't be in one session, this might be over a few sessions, maybe the goal is I want my daughter to be able to go to school camp. 
Mm -hmm. I want to feel safe about letting her go on a school camp because that's a normal thing that children do. And I don't want my sexual abuse history to affect the way I'm parenting my children and to be passing on to them that the world isn't right. safe because I've had that my whole life and it's not very nice, you know. So there could be a lot of work in that, you know, but it's but so then this is a future pacing EFT thing. Okay, so just thinking about, you know, signing the permission form to say she can go, what comes up for you? <gasps> oh, I'm anxious, you know. I don't want to go. I don't want her to go. I want to keep her home safe with me. Um and so then we would tap that down. So I'm kind of explaining to them that um, even though we're doing very recent events or, or things that even haven't happened in the because they're in the future, so there's no trauma in this because it hasn't happened yet, right? Yep. Um, but by focusing on that, what seems like a little thing, that the mind and the body is so intelligent that it knows that we're working on all these, you know, uh, neural pathways that have developed from trauma around the world isn't safe, you know, if I'm not watching her every minute, something bad could happen, um, and that it's because of what happened to her when she was around this age. So um, so we're asking, you know, the body, where are you feeling that? We're asking the, the conscious person, what are your thoughts about that? We're asking the unconscious. Um, and so we're kind of bringing all these parts of the self together and tapping on all the different aspects and that, and basically, by doing that, we help the person to achieve their what might have been their goal, which mm -hmm. which might just be something like, "I want to let my kid go on school camp." I mean, that might seem yeah. like a small thing, but actually, not a small thing at all for a person who has a, a, an experience of childhood sexual abuse. And and the thing that I really love about that is, and this is something that's been forming in me as I continue to do work, is yeah. recognizing yeah. that. The goal is better. The goal is not total transformation. And oftentimes yeah. being able to add one small thing that I wasn't doing before dramatically impacts the nature of my life. And I was yeah. actually originally introduced to this in, in, in pain management. And I learned this from, yeah. from Dan, Dan Cleary and Dan, Dan's a hypnotist. And then when people would come to him as a hypnotist, they typically here in the United States spent seven years in trying to do other things that was not useful. And they'd yeah. sit down across from him and um, he would say, how would you feel if after 90 minutes of hypnosis, you'd be pain free? And they're like, that would be great. And he's like, forget it. It's not going to happen. He goes, but tell me how yeah. your life would be better if half the pain went away. Tell me how your life would be better if 25% of the pain went away. Tell me how your life would be better if 10% of the pain went away. And yeah. if it's a back issue, maybe I can now sit down for two hours, which means I can go to a movie or I can go to dinner yeah. with loved ones. It's like, yes, we can do that. And yeah, so what that yeah, is, yeah. is it's about improving the quality of life. It's not clearing the issue that is at hand. And so what you're talking yeah. about here is by creating the sense of safety that I'm now allowing my children to do something that I wasn't before. Their yeah. lives are better. Our family lives are better. That means I'm heading in the exact right direction. And then we find yeah. the next future pacing thing where we're able to go, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if I wasn't controlled by this so we could or I'm allowing yeah. someone to, and it just becomes this gentle, easier way of stepping into it. Yeah, and it's ultimately what people are looking for is, you know, like you ask these people, what do you want, what's important to you now? I don't want to uh, pass my trauma on to my children. You know what I mean? I right. don't want my children to suffer the way I have. Um, and so that is is about, you know, me being able to deal with my own stuff so that mm -hmm. I can just be present for them. You know, like I, one woman I've been working with who has a horrific sexual trauma history, her goal is about being present for her children, mm -hmm. you know. And so we've we've started with, well, tell me a time when you didn't feel like you were very present, you know, because yeah. when you have a lot of trauma, it can make you snappy, you know. It Being anxious all the time can make people just feel exhausted, you know. They, they can be pretty pretty yeah. prickly, as I say, and so they, they know this isn't good. You know, I don't want this for my children. I don't want this in my family. I don't want trauma to be impacting the way that I'm parenting. So often people come to me because, you know, they might have worked with other practitioners and maybe, the, and, and you know, often they did do some memory work that left them feeling absolutely shot in their nervous system, exhausted, unable to function for a day or two, 
you know. So it's not, um, you know, I often say to my mentees, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because yes. the hippocampus gives you a memory in a session doesn't mean you go back and work on that memory. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not always because in this niche in particular, um, sometimes it's just too much for the nervous system. You know, I'm very, very aware of not blowing up a person's nervous system. And because I've seen it happen, you know, like I've done it myself. Yeah. I've, I've, it's happened to me um, because it's hard, you know, sometimes it's just hard to avoid because you don't know. People can look like they're very calm and right. say, these are the things I want to work on. And then whilst you're tapping, as everybody knows, oh, now I'm thinking about the time when such and such, you know, dropped me off at the front of my house and then his hand was there. and I, Right. And I just froze and I didn't do anything and I didn't say anything. And and you're like, oh, how do we get there from there? But it's all, you know, it's pretty unavoidable basically when you're doing EFT because you are tapping right. into the unconscious. And the hippocampus will give you these memories. So you, right. we need to know, um, you know, how to deal with things in a way that feels safe and manageable for the nervous system. Yeah. And one, one of the things that, that I have gotten, have worked really hard at, and hopefully I do well, is this idea of re-raveling someone that sometimes we get unraveled, but, but making yeah. sure that we're like putting someone back together in a way that is safe to move forward. And yeah. in, in some of the stuff that you're talking about here, like when we bump into something that is big, that probably is inappropriate for us to do that. Like, yeah, it's amazing how much calming you can do and how much planning and strategy you could do by just tapping your collarbone, take a nice big deep breath for me. Yeah. You know, so we're acknowledging what's happened, but we're not diving in. We're not going after mm. it. We're tapping, we're giving them a chance to downregulate it. And yeah. for me, it's also giving me three and a half seconds to figure out what my plan is and the step that I'm going to take next. Oh, that's right. navigating that's right. all the tapping's that. for us as well, isn't it? As practitioners. Right. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing the amount of thinking Definitely. that I can do in the length of a deep breath. And if I don't have enough time in one deep breath, I'm going to have you take a second one because we've yeah. been doing those things as we've been navigating it. Yeah. So, so what else is there anything else that, because I think you've been doing just such a lovely job of laying out how specific this particular type of trauma is and mm. because of that specificity, how we have to approach in such a way so we can keep people as close to being emotionally regulated or we can, can keep stepping back to it. Yeah. Like I love this thoughtful, deliberate stuff. Is there anything else that we should be considering as we're thinking about this sort of issue? Look, I think that there's, you know, I just sort of teach my mentees like it's a bit like, you know, you're driving around a, a, a big mountain or something and there's ice on the road, you know, like a person's doing EFT with you is like getting on a bus with you. And you need to be a safe driver, right? So you need mm -hmm. to know when to put the brakes on. Like, what? Whoa, this person's getting very things are getting very intense. Let's back off a bit. We need to like put the brakes on. So it, it's you know like so in my sessions, there's a lot of just let's just stop and just let's do some silent yeah. tapping, right? So let's just let that big wave of emotion come in. Let the tears let the tears come. They're appropriate, right? So. Um, so I just let people know in the beginning when I'm showing them where the points are, if you start getting a bit teary, we're just going to do some silent tapping or I will model orienting tapping to them and I send them little YouTube videos on this is what orienting tapping looks like, this is what silent tapping looks like. Sometimes we might just do one of those, you know, nice little Peter Levine, um, one of those nice little kind of heart holds um, so there's lots of just like when we're never letting the trauma pull us in, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're always staying one little step ahead of the trauma and I'm, and I educate people that the trauma pull is real. I can tell when you start talking, when you start talking fast and your eyes start going, you know, like, yeah, okay, let's just slow it down. And, you know, it means that, and I pre-frame this as well. Sometimes I'll have to be a bit bossy and just say no more words. That's yeah. I don't need any more examples. Okay. That's and, enough. Let's just. Let's just stop there, you know, so I explain to people I'm not being rude. I'm, I don't not mean to be pushy, but I can see the trauma pull happening. Yeah. And my job, as I've explained to you, is to, is, to, is to put the brakes on when that's happening, slow down. I don't want you to become dissociated because then I'm going to spend the next half an hour trying to get you back in the room and you'll probably feel crappy for days. So, And, and, and the thing when that people understand that's the purpose, they're fine yeah. with it. 
Yeah, and, and what I what I what I I'm, what I'm hearing that I love is, and I don't know if you say it in this particular way, but this is the way that I'm translating it in my brain: is yeah. your job is not to help them to heal this thing. Your job is to help them to be regulated in this moment. And if you just yeah. keep helping them be regulated in this moment, we're going to be presented with those things and we're going to clear it. And so it's yeah. like, how do we be in this moment healthy? How do we be in this moment healthy? How do we be in this moment healthy? Mm. And that's dispositionally is so like counter to the, we're going to solve this problem with transformation. Like, and, and there's- Yeah, I've never used the word transformation. Actually, yeah. I, I don't. Because, you know, pe people who have been experienced this kind of trauma- often it has affected their whole life in a big way and they feel like I, I can't even do EFT properly, right? Like I yeah. had a psychologist say to me, I couldn't, like you, I couldn't even start my personal peace procedure because I know what's in there. And so she yeah. put off starting certification because she felt stupid because she couldn't even start her personal peace procedure. Like, yeah. you know, so that's, it's real. Um, and so we need to be just upfront and realistic with people. I, you know, like I had a woman... I think it was her 19th session the other day and it was probably the first session where I felt like we, we had a, we had regulation pretty well for right. most of the session, right, and she didn't have such a bad headache that she – and that, you know, that took a lot of work for, for yeah. her and a lot of me being very careful and concentrating and being as gentle as I know how to be. So I do not talk about one-minute wonders and transformation yeah. because that makes people who've experienced a lot of trauma feel kind of inadequate. They feel like they've already failed at therapy yep. because they've done all these other things and they're still not better. And EFD is meant to be this amazing fast thing. Yeah. And yet they've had this many packages with this person and this many sessions with that person and they still don't feel better. So, yeah, it's a big responsibility. Um, yeah. So I just, for me, it's just about being realistic, right? I don't know how many sessions this is going to take. I don't, I, I can't tell by looking at you how much, you right. know, stored survival stress is in your body, how that's going to express itself when we start tapping. Because if you feel like vomiting, then that's what we're going to be focusing yeah. on. Not you meeting another person on Tinder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've got to deal with what's coming up in the body first. So, and, and, and one thing that I, that I want to, to reiterate as we're having this conversation is for something like sexual trauma, tapping does not qualify you to work with sexual trauma. Like just like, yeah. like tapping does not qualify us to do anything. If we're qualified to do it, tapping is another amazing tool, but what yeah. this conversation does for all of us as we're hearing it, like I, I love the, the gentle sense of care that you have for your client in the moment. And that is yeah. the driving force in the way that you craft your work. And that is, yeah. that is something I think all of us who have the opportunity to use these tools, like I think that like, that's a super valuable lesson for us to hear, even if we're not yeah. in a circumstance where we're tapping on this particular issue, like it's such a, yeah. such a healthier approach as someone who is being a health helper. That is, yeah. it's a good thing for me to hear as we're having these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's good. And honestly, it just, you know, from being pretty burnt out and thinking, I don't want to leave this job, but it's kind of killing me just watching people suffer. Um, from yeah. that to loving my work and really looking forward to seeing ev every client come back and hearing how they had their first night's sleep in 10 years. Yeah. And, you know, they're able to go to the supermarket now and they're able to sit and play with their child because they're not having flashbacks or, you know, like to see the change happen in people. Um, really, if you're a mental health professional and you're a bit burnt out, this can really yeah. transform how you feel about your work, you know, because Absolutely. you know you're helping people more effectively. Yeah. And awesome. in a much shorter time frame, you know, as Peter says, it's yeah, it's not it's not necessarily superior, well I think it is, to 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 C B T or um, EMDR. But like a lot of people that have been sexually abused, they can't they can't do EMDR. So it might be yep. the gold standard, but if you can't focus specifically on the event Absolutely. It's re-traumatizing, you know what I mean? So EFT is just nice and gentle and safe and effective, but I don't, it's faster than a lot of things, but it doesn't mean it's, you know. Yeah. 
it gets the job done in a lot less time but it still takes a lot of commitment and absolutely and 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 the important thing is you know that i just always go back to you know happiness is outcome divided by expectation and like i like i love the fact that you you know like i love the fact as a community we're not talking about one session one minute miracles the way we did 15 years ago because it just doesn't create a healthy space for us to do transformation inside of and so Yeah. yeah that's awesome we're talking about whole loaves. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> therefore, lots of little pieces. <laughs> lots of little pieces, one bite at a time. That's really, really awesome. Yeah. Well, Jules, thank you very, very much for spending some of your Sunday morning with us and, and sharing your experience oh, and pleasure. expertise that I just love the conversation we just had. Great. Thanks for having me. I'm really um, pleased that you were happy to include this topic. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. My pleasure. Very, very good.